As we approach the end of this series, this has been a very challenging series to do because there's a lot of criticism towards the church in America and around the world. And as I was praying about this series back in August of 2020, God told me to go through the book of Malachi because the book of Malachi directly addresses the problems with the churches in America today just like it did back then. And as we approach the end, there's a very significant piece that is being said that I believe we are seeing in the world today. And we're just going to pick it up where we left off. Malachi 4, verse 5. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the earth with a curse. There's a lot of speculation on what this means. And from the moment this was spoken by Malachi and written down and people would study the prophets, there was a lot of speculation on what this means. And it's important we understand what it means so we can be aware of it and we can see it. And more importantly, we can play a part in this. So what is this that, that Malachi is talking about that Elijah, he will send Elijah before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord? Well, in Luke 1, we get the first glimpse of this. Verse 11, Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer is heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. And you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will also be filled with the Holy Spirit even from his mother's womb. And he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. And he will also go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. The spirit of Elijah is to make people prepared for the coming of the Lord. It's exactly what Malachi addressed, and it's exactly what John is literally born to address. So, as John came, was that the coming of Elijah? Well, let's keep digging, because you can't take people's commentaries on this. You have to see what the Word of God says, specifically what it is Jesus Christ said, because commentaries will lead you way astray, especially on this one, because half the people have no idea what they're talking about. So if we pick it up in John chapter 1, verse 19, now this is the testimony of John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? That we may give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? And he said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. So what he's saying is he's physically not Elijah, but he is coming in the spirit of Elijah. And we can see that, he, and, and it, it unfolds more clearly as Jesus talks about it, as well as once John is captured and put in prison, we see more on this in Matthew 11. Now it came to pass when Jesus finished commanding his twelve, disciples that he parted from there and teach and preach in their cities. And when John had heard in prison about the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said to him, Are you the coming one, or do we look for another? Jesus answered and said to them, Go and tell John the things which you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, and the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he who is not offended because of me. As they departed, Jesus began to say to the multitudes concerning John, What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? But what did you go out to see? A man clothed in soft garments? Indeed, those who wear soft garments are in king's houses. But what did you go out and see? A prophet? Yes, I say to you, and more than a prophet. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. 
So there's another reference to the Malachi. That was Malachi 3. And what we're seeing is that John made way the coming of the Lord, and that is in the spirit of Elijah. Elijah was a man who was alive during the first kings of Israel, and what we saw was that there was a wicked king uh, during Elijah's day, and a priestess who killed all the prophets except for a couple hundred, and Elijah essentially declared the falsity and the wrath of God and his coming. And then we saw it in many, many miracles. But Jesus specifically addresses this because there's a moment in time where the disciples see Jesus transformed on a mountain and they see Elijah and Moses. And Jesus does not make confusing what this is. He says it very plain and clear what's to happen regarding these verses in Malachi. We'll just pick it up in 17.1. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, brought them up on a high mountain by themselves, and was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with him. Then Peter answered and said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, let us make here three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and suddenly a voice came out of the cloud, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. When the disciples heard it, they fell on their faces and were greatly afraid. But Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise, and do not be afraid. And when they lifted up their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus only. Now as they came down from the mountain, Jesus commanded them, saying, Tell the vision to no one until the Son of Man is risen from the dead. And his disciples asked him, saying, Why why then do the scribes say that Elijah must come first? Now that's, they're talking about this verse in Malachi we're addressing. Then Jesus answered and said to them, Elijah truly is coming first and will restore all things. But I say to you that Elijah has come already, and they did not know him, but did to him whatever they wished. Likewise, the Son of Man is also about to suffer at their hands. Then the disciples understood that he spoke to them of John the Baptist. So ultimately what Jesus is saying is, is the spirit of Elijah. It is the spirit of Elijah that calls the coming of the dreadful day of the Lord. And John was in the spirit of Elijah. Now, let me get this very clear. He was not filled with the spirit of Elijah. He was filled with the Holy Spirit, but he came in the lowercase s, spirit of Elijah, declaring the coming of the Lord. And well, what did John have to say? Well, in Matthew 3, it's very clear, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he who is spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Then Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region around the Jordan went out to him and were baptized by him in the Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, Broad of vipers, who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Therefore bear fruits worthy of repentance, and do not think to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father, for I say to you that God is able to raise up children to Abraham from these stones. And even now the axe is laid to the roots of the trees. Therefore, every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. It's a warning. It, it's, it's all about a warning. And when we see this prophecy in Malachi, this is dual prophetic. It's a dual prophetic thing because prophets were looking for the spirit of Elijah to come, and it did. According to Jesus, it, it came. But it's dual prophetic. It's talking about, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. That's his, coming, his second coming is the great and dreadful day of the Lord. So it's a dual prophetic. It's, it's a very similar thing to what I'm doing on this channel or what many other people are doing. They're declaring the coming of the Lord and they're blowing a trumpet as loud as possible for everyone to hear. That's what the spirit of Elijah is. It's to repent for the kingdom of heaven and it is a very, very clear message that the churches in America, they're just not teaching for the most part. 
So I'd love to hear your thoughts on all this. We're going to talk more about this um, in the next episode. We're going to spend a few episodes on this just to really address this and make it clear and plain as best we can. Uh, but if you have any thoughts on it, put in the comments below. If you like this video, click like and subscribe. If you feel called to support this channel through Patreon, that link is also below. But the most important part of this channel, we take prayer requests. I never hesitate to send that in. Thank you for watching this episode of God, Family, and Guns. And as always, love God, love your family, and love guns. Thank you.